All right, I'm back. Again, I'm kind of going through my list of topics about 3D and WebGL with P5.js, and I'm now on to camera. So in this, in this video, I'm gonna talk about camera. Now, there are three functions that are important to look at. Camera, perspective, and ortho. I recently did a coding challenge, which I will link to from this video, where I made heavy use of ortho perspective, and I did a kind of terrible job of explaining it. So I'm going to try to come back to that in this particular video. But let's start just with the camera function. So the thing about a camera, actually, so let me, let's just pretend, uh, for example, that this is the scene that I'm looking at, right? And that's the cube. And what I want to do is there's this idea, this idea, this is a made up concept of a camera. <laughs> there's a camera over there. I should turn it towards, I'm out of the picture. There's this made up idea of a camera, which I'm going to draw like this. What might not be immediately obvious to you is there are a whole bunch of properties associated with this camera. For example, this camera is at a particular location. It's at a particular XYZ location. It's also pointing in a particular XYZ direction. So a camera, you can think of this marker as the camera. It's pointing directly at you, and it might be closer to you or further away. It might be up here, but pointing at, you know, at the ceiling. So the, I need to, def when I have a camera, I need to define where everything is in the scene than where the camera is or where it's pointing. But that's not even all. I also need to define a vector that points up. Because now if you think about it, right, if this is the camera and you were to, this is a terrible idea for me to pick up this camera. Rotate the camera, right? Oh, this, everything's going to go. All right, apologies for the technical camera mishap there, but you can imagine, right, if the camera's turning, is it looking on its side, is it looking straight up? So the, that vector pointing up tells us how we're supposed to turn. So we need all three of those properties. We actually need, and this is also an XYZ value. So the camera actually needs, to set a camera, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine arguments. So let's go back and do that. Now here's a scene that I've set up. It's mostly the same as the previous video, but I'm just using a normal material as opposed to the video texture. Now here's the thing. Watch as I magically add a camera to this scene without the camera function. You're, this is going to blow your mind. At the very beginning, right up here, I'm just going to say translate. 0, 0, mouse x. Whoa, look at that camera zooming in and out of the scene. So it's really important to realize that this camera is an artificial concept created by us to create the illusion of a sort of pair of eyes, or a single eye really, in the scene. I guess it's a pair because you're seeing depth. Anyway, <laughs> to look into the scene. But if this is my three-dimensional object, and this is my camera, what's the difference between moving the camera towards it or moving the object or the whole scene towards the camera? Those are the same things. So you can make do a lot of camera work and moving things around and changing the view by just manipulating the rotation, orientation, and position of everything in the world, but sometimes the camera function can actually be quite useful to do certain things that wouldn't be as easy to do without it. So let's take a look at how that works. Deep breath. Okay, so now I'm going to go back. I'm going to take out this translate, and I'm going to add the camera function. Now, where is the camera? Let's put the camera at 0, 0, 0. Now, where should the camera look? Let's have the camera look at 0, 0, 0. Oh, and which way is up? Let's have the camera point up, 0, 1. One point's up or just one point down? I don't know, 1, 0. So this is just about right, the default camera, except for the fact that what this is, again, if this is my object, my scene, I just put the camera right here in the same place. I actually want the camera to be a little bit out. The camera is, by default, out. And I, I think there's like a specific value for this, and I, I always forget what it is, so I'm going to pull it from a processing tutorial that I will link to that uh, has a lot of information about 3D. I'm going to just grab this value. So this is the default Z location of the camera. 0, 0, and I'm going to put it here. So it's the height divided by 2 divided by tangent of pi divided by 6. There's probably a better way to write that. Some sort of magic number, and I'm going to, now I'm going to go back to the sketch. We should see this is exactly as it was, right? So I'm using the camera function. If I comment out the camera function, there it is. It's the same scene, but now I can start to move the camera around. For example, what if I actually put the camera on its side, like pointing to the right? Right? Now I'm looking at the scene. I just 
turn the camera over and we could actually animate that and have it bounce around as if it's like a shake. We could have a shaky camera. Ooh, that's kind of like a fun thing to try to do. Again, this is no different than rotating the whole scene, but I'm using the camera object to do it. Let's put that back to pointing up. What if I were to move the camera along the x-axis? So I'm going to say x equals map mouse x, which goes between 0 and width to between like negative 200 and 0. So I'm going to kind of like move the camera to the left as I move the mouse. I don't, this is sort of silly. Whoops, I have a syntax error. 0 width negative 2. I don't, oh, I, I, oh, this should have x here now. So that should probably say camera x just to be kind of consistent. So now we can see the look. It looks like it's spinning which is kind of weird, but you have to remember that where the camera is looking is still at the center. So what I'm actually doing is this, right? I'm doing this, right? It's always looking at the cube. It's just moving to the side of that plane. You can kind of see it. You can kind of imagine that. And again, if I were more thoughtful about this, I could probably create a better visual demonstration. But what I could also do at the same time is move where it's looking. Remember, this is the sort of look at location. It's called center X, center Y, center Z. It's the look at location. So I have where the camera is, where I'm looking, and then the, the orientation of the camera. So now if I did that, this gives me a pan. And I, for some reason, I did this in uh, inverse. I didn't mean to do that. So let me, um, uh, let me just, I think what I meant to do is this. Yeah, so I, I don't have it backwards, which is not a big deal. But you can see now I'm panning back and forth. And you know, I could do something like, change the, I could have it rotate as I'm panning. You can imagine there's a lot of possibilities. So that's what the camera function does. Um, I, it, this merits probably some kind of coding challenge where I attach the camera to some like moving thing throughout a scene. Oh, we can make a shaky, let's just make a shaky camera because that's kind of, could be fun. Um, so uh, how would I make a shaky camera? Um, let's have um, the camera, camera x equal random negative five, five. Let's see what this looks like. And camera, Camera Y also equal a random amount. We could use Perl and noise to have it be, and then I'm going to give, oh no, the Z, I'm going to make that just like an offset. Uh, so I'm going to put this in, and let's have it continue to look at the center. So it's like a, so you can see, is the scene shaking? Is the camera shaking? I don't know, but you can see. Now I could probably, I probably could have like do something weird, like mix these values up. So I could have it like, look in the slightly like, also in a random direction that's slightly off. So I don't know, you can see here, earthquake, earthquake. So I've used the camera now to make kind of a little bit of an earthquake simulation. Okay, so that's camera. Did a couple more things with that. Let's comment that out. Next, I wanna talk about perspective. Now, what per perspective is separate from the camera. Perspective is a function that defines how we, how that three, illusion of three-dimensional perspective is created. And it involves a couple things. It involves a field of view, which is really a pyramid, but I'm gonna draw it kind of like a cone or a two-dimensional cone, right? So that field of view could be wider or it could be smaller. And then it also defines a clipping plane. So in other words, maybe actually anything that comes in front of this near point, I don't even see or anything that's past this far point, I don't even see. So there are defaults. I also need an aspect ratio, I think, um, which generally would be tied to just the aspect ratio of your canvas. Um, but that, that, there could be some nuance there, I'm sure. So I, I, I have to admit that I don't know that I, I'm not really a 3D person. So I, you know, I, I have done some examples of things. I don't think that I've ever used the perspective. Maybe I've used it to kind of expand the clipping plane, the near and far points, or to shrink it. But generally, I'm always working with the, the, the default field of view. Let's try to just at least add it, though, to see um, what we get. So, um, so if I were to add the perspective function, let's get it working with the default perspective. So the default perspective, and I'm going to go back to my uh, uh, processing tutorial to get these default numbers. And I'm going to just copy that in here. And I'm going to change that. The processing P3D renderer is a Java programming environment. So I need to just quickly change this to be uh, compatible to, um, so basically, the, uh, the default field of view is a 60 degree angle, or pi divided by 3. The Z camera Z location, right? This is actually something that I already uh, added up here, right? It's the same as this, 
right? So that is probably, um, so that's kind of the default camera Z location. And so that's how I'm defining, ah, that's how I'm defining the clipping plane. It's the, the camera divided by 10 and the camera Z times 10. So that's, so, but you know, I could make these arbitrary numbers, but let's just at least look, and then aspect ratio is width divided by height. So let's look at, um, let's look at how this looks. Okay, so now we have the, um, the default perspective. So the first thing we could experiment with here is like, so these, that, that clipping plane is defined by where the camera is because you want to see something based on the camera. But for example, what if I just take the far end of the clipping plane and assign that to mouse X? I can now see, right, I kind of, as I move the mouse, it kind of clips it's sort of like taking away what I can render. So this is generally something that I don't play with because I just want to like see the whole scene. But sometimes in certain situations you might need to deal with it. Um, so uh, another thing that we could play with is the field of view. What if instead of having a 60 degree field of view, I had like a 30 degree field of view. So it was shrunk or even like a 10 degree field of view. So this would be pi divided by six would be a 30 degree field of view. And you can see it's, the field of view has shrunk, so it actually looks kind of like I've zoomed in on it. Um, also, the, the clipping plane was changed. So, because the clipping plane is being defined based on the camera, which would be defined in the field of view. So this is, this is a little bit kind of nuts here, but let's, let's, um, let's, try, to, um, let's try to do something by just say, I'm gonna have the clipping plane between, between, between zero and 2000. I'm going to put the field of view back to 60 degrees. And I'm not going to actually move where the camera is. I'm just going to leave the camera at uh, as if there was a field of view of pi divided by 60 degrees. So that camera, and actually, so sorry. Uh, oops, what I want to do, let me back up for a second here. What I want to do to demonstrate this, I think this is going to work, is that I want that camera Z location to be fixed. So I'm going to store that, and so I'm going to just put in pi divided by 3 here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the field of view be a variable that changes with mouse x between 0 and pi. So now what I should see is, look how that perspective changes. Like this is a 180 degree field of view. And that right here is about 60 degrees, and now it's sort of like my field of view is narrowing. Now the camera is actually not moving here, but based on the field of view, we're seeing kind of a different volume and it appears closer. So um, this is kind of a complex topic, and I think I've kind of over, <laughs> overemphasized it, because really what I want to talk about, which I think is much more important or interesting to play around with, is orthographic perspective or orthographic projection. In other words, with perspective, with traditional perspective, objects that are farther away appear smaller than objects that are closer. That's how we create this three-dimensional perspective. With orthographic perspective, objects that are farther away are the same size as objects that are close. They might be different sizes, but if they are actually the same dimensions, they will appear to be the same size. And this creates kind of a flattened 3D look. And this is a classic 3D look that you'll see in lots of game, uh, certain uh, game designs like Qbert. Uh, so here's an image of Qbert. Um, you can see how this has a kind of like flattened 3D, flattened 3D perspective. So, and this is, uh, this is also referred to as isometric projection. So let's see if we can create, and this is what a coding challenge that I'll link to from this video where I do this uh, and create a scene that has this kind of perspective, uh, projection. Um, so let me change now. I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to write ortho in here. And you're going to see, oops, as I go here, I'm going to refresh. This is now orthographic projection. And what you see, it looks like it's skewed, but actually as the cube rotates and it gets further away or closer, it doesn't change its size. So this will be a lot more obvious if I put a whole bunch of these cubes. So what I'm gonna do is, I, let me take out the, let me keep the rotate in there, and I'm gonna make a little loop. I'm gonna say four let x equal negative 200, uh, x is less than 200, x plus equal uh, 50. And what I'm going to do, and I'm gonna put uh, push and pop inside the loop, and actually I also want to put rotate for each one of these. And what I want to do is I want to translate by x. Uh, x, 0, 0. 
So what I'm trying to do, let me take out all the rotate and I'm gonna make these boxes 50. What I'm trying to do is just put a row of boxes. So there's a row of boxes. We can't see that. Do I have it? Actually, I have ortho on. Let me take ortho off. You can see there's my row of boxes. Now let's, let's actually see this perspective a little bit. Let's make the boxes a little bit smaller. Um, let me give them actually like an ambient material. And let me add a point light, just that's white, that is above, um, that's like at uh, zero, uh, 255, uh, zero, negative 200, and then uh, from a little out front, 200. So let me, so we can see here now, uh, and it's, uh, I would like this, love this light, you can see, and let me make the background um, just a, different, a slightly different gray, so we can see what we got. You can see, there we go. So you can see this perspective. You can see how um, I've got this idea of sort of vanishing points, my eye looking at the center of this field of view. Let's change this to ortho. Let, let's put the rotates in. And you can see, we can see this perspective even more. Now let's change this to, or, and, and actually let me also uh, translate along the z-axis, because this is gonna be kind of key. So I wanna translate along the z-axis. So where do I do those? Translate, I'm also gonna translate that same uh, X value uh, minus 200 along the Z axis, and I'm going to make the boxes a little bit bigger. Whoops. Uh, oh, X. There is no Z. I'm just going to use. I'm going to reuse the X value. So now you can see. Um, and let me actually say X times 10. Whoops. Minus 200. Oh. Uh, X minus 200. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'll keep them not so big. Okay, there we go. This is what I was trying to get for. So you can see this perspective as they get smaller as they go back. All right, we're getting somewhere. Now, bear with me. Let's turn on orthographic projection. Ortho. Now you can see, first of all, so I run afoul of the clipping plane. So if I go back to and look at uh, Simon's, oops, cheat sheet here, which I seem to have lost. Oh, no, here it is. Um, I can see here, left, right, bottom, top, near, far. So I can need to define the volume, the box where everything I see lives. And so I can say right now, I want to go left, negative 200, 200, top, negative 200, bottom, 200, or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. Top, I don't know. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Let's just, and then I'm just going to give myself a really big space negative 1,000, 1,000, just to not worry about it too much. And I'm going to go back to the sketch, and we can see, there we go. So you can see, even though those are going backwards, they're all exactly the same size. So again, have I really made the, um, something, have I really, does my design that I'm doing really merit orthographic projection? Again, taking this out, we can see this is what the actual scene looks like. And for what I just did, I want it to look this way to be able to see that difference. But there are some cases and certain kinds of flattened uh, views of the world that are still have the 3D drawing but appear more flat that you want to use that orthographic projection for. Let me quickly correct one thing about ortho. The, um, the clipping plane near and far, oh, I can't believe I didn't realize this, is relative to the camera. So if I say the clipping plane is between zero that's here, and between 1,000, that's kind of 1,000 units away, this sort of like vague three-dimensional units away from the camera. So me saying like a negative 1,000 to 1,000 is kind of pointless because now the ca that's sort of behind. But what if you like rotate the camera or something? Maybe it would matter, but um, I don't know. It's, but um, so let me actually just put this back at zero. And you know, I could say 0 0.01 maybe is the most accurate, but just to see that that is, yeah. So that's what I needed to do. I just need a further, uh, a further far value to start at zero. Okay, so what am I missing? I have now have done some tutorials about, we looked at 3D geometry, primitive shapes. We looked at material being sort of the skin of that geometry, lights being light into the scene, uh, texture being a way of taking image data and wrapping it onto that geometry. So we've done all these things, and now in this video, I've mostly looked at the camera, which is a way of moving our view of the scene around, changing our field of view, or even changing the perspective, whether it's actual 3D perspective or orthographic projection. The things that I'm missing are uh, how to do some custom shapes in 3D, maybe with textures as well. 
um, how to load a model from another environment, and also, I should add to this list, something called a shader. So this is something certainly that can be done in a 3D rendering environment. A shader can be applied to geometry in a variety of different ways. And so at some point, I would like to come back and do that. I will make a quick uh, plug for the, uh, the Book of Shaders. I think it's thebookofshaders.com. I'll link to it in this video's description. If you're interested in shaders, it's a great resource for learning about them. Okay, thanks for watching this uh, video about camera and perspective.